Now, when you talk about cervical cancer screening, what we are talking about, I am not sure how many of you in the press actually understand what exactly we are looking at. Now, when we are talking about cervical cancer, screening, it's different from diagnosing what exactly is the cervical cancer. When we talk of screening, we are trying to catch the disease before it actually becomes a cancer. And luckily, it's one of the cancers in which we can do this. And that's a bottom line I would like you to take home. Because what happens is, when a woman develops cervical cancer, before she develops cervical cancer, there is a huge pre-cancer stage, which can vary from 3 to 10 years. So from the time they develop this pre-cancer changes in the neck of the uterus, by the time it develops cancer, in some women the gap is as high as 10 years. So if we catch this, pre-cancer changes, that is what the screening is all about. If we catch it at that stage and we treat it at that stage, we prevent the cervical cancer from happening. And this is where the problem lies for us, for doctors. Because what happens is when we tell, what we practice in our country is what is called the opportunistic screening. So any woman who comes into the hospital, we ask them as a part of the routine question, have you had a smear test? And most of the time the answer is something like this, what is that doctor? Or something like, uh, no, I don't know, uh, I don't want to because I think it's painful. And then the next five minutes goes in explaining to them what I just told you. So basically telling them you catch it at a pre-stage before it becomes cancer and then we do it. So there is a lot of, what to say, the public awareness is lacking. And the public awareness is lacking because most women think that they don't have to look after themselves. I think it is including the women folks who are sitting over here, I suppose. <laughs> because they always think that um, if they look after the others, someone else will look after them. But the bottom line is, unless you look after yourselves, you can't actually look after the rest of the family or your career for that matter. And the second barrier, what I find is, second is, uh, the, even if they know, there are a few women who actually know what a pap smear is, and they actually know, but doctor, I don't want to know if I want, if I have a cancer. The fear that it's going to be cancer. And if you explain to them, we are not actually looking for cancer, we are actually looking for a stage before it becomes cancer, and we are going to, if we catch it at the stage and we treat you, we are not going to develop cancer. And that involves counseling. And that is where when we see gynecologists are practicing, that becomes a problem. So from the media point of view, if that awareness is raised, that they have to go for screening at regular intervals to catch the pre-cancer stage before it becomes cancer, that is where the awareness will come up. And that's the first stage in the disease prevention. And we are, uh, in a way, we know that cancer screening works because it has worked in different parts of the world where they have regular screening programs where they actually screen women every three years or five years and call them back and tell them you have to come and have a smear done because it's a national coordinated program and you have to have it done. Then in those countries, the cervical cancer incidence has come down. And even the cervical cancer which are diagnosed in those countries is in the early stages because they go for regular screening. Whereas in our country, we often diagnose the disease at an advanced stage and because they have symptoms. It's only when they have symptoms, they usually come to the hospital. And also most often the women don't come to the hospital even if they have symptoms because they think it will get sorted out on its own. And our next target audience apart from media is usually for me are the uh, school teachers and um, bank employees. So whenever they come to my clinic, I sit down and talk with them for five minutes because they are the best ambassadors. Because um, the teachers actually sit in the staff room and talk a lot about themselves about the health problem. And that is a common scenario. So if you tell them that this is why you are having it done. Now after you've had it, and you usually tell them after they've had it, I tell them, was it painful? No doctor. Was it uncomfortable? No doctor. So what has prevented you from happening, taking it so long? And they usually say, because I was only worried. Now your job is to go and tell your colleagues to have this time with your local gynecologist. And that is the same thing goes with the bank managers. 
So it's not only a job of doing the screening at the hospital level, it is also initiating that process at the public level from their own scenarios, from the patients themselves will actually educate the other patients and they will actually bring more women for screening. And that's what I think we should aim for. Thank you.